I'm Aiden, and today we're going to be painting a gingerbread doormat. I originally saw this doormat for almost $40 on Anthropology, and I thought that was way too much, so I'm going to show you how you can make it for close to 10 This is a great holiday project, especially if you've had a gingerbread crisis event like me. Okay, supplies. Here's what you're going to need. A doormat, obviously. I got mine from Target. White or off-white acrylic paint brown paint, these foamy brush things, at least one paintbrush, a box cutter or sharp scissors, a ruler or tape measure, chalk or something to draw with, and masking tape. Start by flipping the mat over so the vinyl side is facing up. We're going to draw out some guidelines before cutting the doormat into a house shape. Use the ruler or tape measure to measure five and a half inches down from the top corner of the doormat. Make a mark with a chalk or a pencil. Next, from the same corner, measure two and a half inches towards the center of the mat. Use a flat edge to draw a line connecting the two marks. Repeat on the other top corner. Next, measure two inches down from the top edge of the doormat in several places, left, middle, and right. Use a straight edge to connect these points into one long line across the doormat's entire width. This is going to be the top of the roof line. Then draw in the chimneys on each side a few inches from the edge of the roof's side slopes. Carefully use the box cutter to cut the corners off using the lines that you've drawn. Then make your cuts for the chimneys. Then make your last cuts across the rest of the roof lines. Don't accidentally cut the chimneys off here. And then flip your doormat back over. I'm modeling mine after my childhood home, so I made a few creative changes. Next, use the masking tape to help you get a straight roof line by taping from corner to corner at the base of the roof slope. Wrap the tape around the back to help it stick better. And now we paint. Use the foam brush to lightly dab across the top of the tape line. Dab. Don't brush the paint on, or it could get under the tape and bleed. We also really want the paint to sink down in between the matte fibers. Remove the tape while the paint is still wet. You can add another layer over this line that you just made if you want to thicken it up. Next, dab a line across the top of the roof, cutting through the chimneys, that way you help define them. Line the top of the chimneys too, kind of like icing or snow. Use a tape measure or ruler to find the center of the doormat and make a line. This will help us center the peak for the roof. Use the foam brush to make an upside down V for the roof peak. And then make two vertical lines down from each outer edge of the V. At the bottom of the newly made entry, Make several horizontal lines for stairs, maybe about a half inch apart. Next, we'll add gumdrop-like shrubs by dabbing out these upside down U shapes all across the bottom of the mat. Paint another bigger and taller arch inside the entryway above the steps for the door, dot with a doorknob. To outline the windows, I used a sheet of paper as a template. Then we'll make six smaller window pane squares inside the big window square. Fill in the small squares, leaving a border of unpainted mat between each pane and the outside window border. For the roof tiles, I switched to a small round paintbrush. Make a row of scallops or mermaid scales across the top of the roof. For the second row, stagger the scallops so that each side of the lump starts in the middle of a lump in the previous row. Repeat again for a third row. If you still have space, add or fake a fourth row to fill in that extra space. I used the back end of a foam brush to add a row of dots below the roof line and the sides of the windows. Lastly, add embellishments and swirls around the windows and door. Hearts can start with a tiny V shape and then just round out the tops to make them more full. Spirals are also great, kind of like peppermint swirls. It 
It's up to you how much or little you want to embellish the rest of your mat. I added these tendrils at the corners of the windows and scrolls or floor to lean below the window, kind of like where a flower box would rest. I also used a tiny bit of brown between the window panes, around the door, and on the roof tiles to add dimension. I also scrubbed in some dark brown on the edges of the house to make it look toasted or dusted with chocolate. Lastly, let it dry and then trim off any stray fibers to help clean up the edges. Then set your new mat out for your Amazon package person to see. Well, that's it. Thanks so much for making it this far in the video. Subscribe for more DIYs, hit that like button, and then share this video with a friend. Happy holidays.